Wednesday to everybody. Um, really worked what I think is going to be one of the more important phases of the game today, and that's picking up the zone pressures on third down. You're looking at a group that only gives up, I think, 28% on third down, which is one of the best in the country. Um, and, and it's something that if we struggled with last year in this game, if you remember. Um, and, you know, I think they do a great job of disguising coverages and bringing those pressures. Um, and you have to be able to find, find the zones. Uh, they void zones, and you've got to be able to find them with a limited amount of time. So we worked extremely hard on that with a lot of crowd noise because I know it's going to be a very lively, lively cloud, crowd, electric crowd, and uh, ought to be a lot of fun. Um, as far as injuries go, really nothing, nothing new to report about status quo from yesterday. So any questions you have, I'll take. Clay, is Sam made a living in the middle of the field last year making mm -hmm. throws there. Is that an area you want to see you guys attack more? Well, it, it's one of those things that um, – you know, I thought we did a decent job in the first game. Um, you know, really, with that that um, uh, shell last week with four under three deep, uh, it's hard to find the zone. It's hard to find the voids. You saw the easy money outside with hitches and, and things like that. Obviously, when you get the two high coverages, when you get the two high coverages, that's when that middle of the field comes open, um, and that's where you got to be alert for it. Um, last week was just so much one high, so much cover three, and it's hard to find those voids over the middle. Tom knows from working with the first team a lot. Uh, what's he shown you just? since everything's happened with the rest of that position group. Yeah, you know, he's done a really good job, not only on defense, but special teams are just getting the ball on the ground. He's a great tackler, plays the ball extremely well, made a hell of a play today on, on the pick. Uh, but uh, he's, he's a kid with great ball skills, great physicality, got great instincts. And for a young person to be able to dive right into Clancy's defense and show up against Stanford, I, I thought him and C.J. Pollard, I can't give them credit enough for having the opportunities to go in there and make plays. They're going to have to do it again this week. Is there one thing you had to emphasize with those guys just to get them even more ready for a bigger role? Um, just do your job. Just do your job. As soon as you try to do a little bit more than your job, then you're chasing something and there goes there goes a route down the field or you get, got out of a gap. Um, you know, you have so many good players around you that if you just focus on your job, hold your gap, defend your man in the pass game, everybody else will too. They're really, they're really experienced and really good. And they'll lean on you. Um, you know, the, the one thing that I have, you know, that we have talked about, and I think Marvell and Ajayne and, and Bigger are doing a great job, is the communication yeah. aspect of being able to to be able to communicate with, with CJ and with Talanoa while they're out there, what the call is, what their responsibility might be, you know, to be able to help them. Um, and I think the in view and service period today over on the defensive side, I think they're doing a nice job of that. Clay, when you go through uh, the game where you four consecutive quarters without a touchdown. Mm -hmm. how, how do you deal you with that? Sleep that? <laughs> you don't sleep well, at I, night? You don't sleep at night. I know it's kind of a given, but how much is, do you feel is a sense of urgency to try to score early? <clears throat> take that focus off so they don't sit there and say, well, now we've got five quarters? No, I, I, I'm, I think it's one of those things that, you know, we played a good football team and, and just didn't get it in. Um, it's it's going to break through. It really is. I, you know, it's, it's something that I know the kids know, that, that they're, they know the focus is in the red zone. Heck, we even got a little bit of extra work in that last service period, as you saw, you know, uh, um, being able to work on it. And, and it'll pop through uh, for them. I, I don't want them to put stress – any undue stress on themselves. Uh, they were in a game last week, and and uh, you know we hold one more touchdown from them, and we score one. It's a different. It's a different game. Have you so. noticed a change in Marvell's level of communication as he's helped out CJ? I, I think ever since uh, really last year, uh, I think he, he really you know. He, in his first two years here, he was a guy that just focused on his job. But in Clancy's defense, there's so much communication that has to be had, and, and that's the nature of pro-style defenses is, you know, to be able to rotate coverage with motions and shifts and you know, dictate who has man and who has zone. Um, you know, so you have to. You're forced to. And it's made Marvell a better player. I, I think it, it will translate so much better for him when he steps on to the next level because he's so used to doing that. In what ways do you feel his game has improved because of that increased communication? Um, you know, obviously, when you're having to communicate and tell other guys what to do, uh, you know, uh, you know that conceptually, the defense. You're not just focused on your job, but you know the kind of concept of the defense from the coverage to the pressures to the front, and and he's become. Uh, I've heard him say it a bunch, a true student in the game. He believes in it now. Um, and he really took that up last year and has really progressed to even more this year. How often are you expecting Chase Williams to play this weekend? 
Um, you know, Chase is learning right now. Um, he, he, we're trying to speed it up as fast as possible. Um, he, you know, obviously we'll roll players. We'll probably do a three-man rotation uh, going into this game with Marvell and, and CJ and Talanoa um, while Chase learns. Uh, but uh, he's catching up fast, fa fast kid. He should be ready soon. Last week, uh, Chris and Reed had opportunities to punt in the ball. Mm -hmm. How do you guys kind of decide what guy to put in? Well, Chris, Chris actually started. Chris actually started a nice job of placement on the longer kick. So Reed has just got a talent for the sting, what we call the sting kick, uh, to pin him inside the 10 yard line. He's got a knack at it. And you saw him even today, him playing catch out here. It's like he's throwing the ball rather than kicking. And, uh, so, uh, you know, that's a specialty of his. We feel comfortable with him in there. And he went in there last week and did his job, pinned him, in, pinned him on the five yard line. Yeah, Chuma's got a little stomach bug, um, so we uh, uh, got him some medicine, get him hydrated, and he'll be back out tomorrow. How concerned are you with the offense? Uh, not very. I, I think they're, you know, I, I'm more concerned with the looks that they're going to get this week. Uh, I think that they've done a nice job in the run game in the first two games. Uh, uh, you know, anytime that that you see the holes that they created for the runners in those first two games, it, it pleases you. Um, you know, some of the zone pressures have gotten them. Uh, and, it, and uh, on a couple physical beats uh, versus some good players. But uh, uh, I'm not worried about it. I know they'll keep improving uh, as the year goes on. Uh, but scheme wise, they're going to be, they got a tough road this week. There's a, um, anytime you face Coach Orlando, you know, you, you're not seeing what happened in the first two games. I promise you, it's going to be something new. So uh, we've got to be able to pick it up and then draw it on the board also on the sideline and be able to adjust if a mistake is made. On that JT, hmm? Is JT's hand still progressing? It seemed like Matt and Jack did more like first team stuff for the end. No, he, he, he took all the first team work. He, he had, yeah, yeah. So we, we split up ones and twos. So, you know, we what we end up doing is in a 20 play segment. End up giving you know eight to ten plays to the twos to make sure that they're prepared to, especially in this type of game that can be a high rep count game. But no, he got the most of it. Back to the line, are you surprised by the disparity about how well they've done in the run blocking as opposed to the struggles on pass protection? Um, no, I, you know, I'm proud of what they've done. I think the runners are running well. They're coming off on the ball. I think their combination blocks, they're heavy men. I mean, you're looking at all 300 pounders across the board. So they are moving people, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, when we get a little bit healthier, uh, you know, with uh, Austin uh, getting a little bit, getting a little bit healthier and, and uh, hopefully uh, Toa continue to have improved health, get a less sore hip on Chuma and keep on, you know, feeling better, I think we'll be better in pass pro. Let's do one more, guys. Is Paul EA in the same situation as, as Chase, kind of in the learning process, or could he play this week? You know, he, he had a couple weeks where, he had a couple weeks, you know, trying to get healed up from the knee, but he, he is, he is really shy, not only on defense, but on special teams. He'll be on several of our special teams units this week. You saw him in the some of the bigger packages that we did last week. He was actually the starter on some of the big packages. Um, so. He's a guy that we're trying to progress as fast as possible. Terrific football player, and you'll see him in each and every game, whether it's on teams or on defense. Thank you, guys. All righty, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.